Russia's renewed campaign of missile strikes in Ukraine is blamed for the deaths of 11 people and injuring 11 others just in the last few hours. Yesterday's barrage saw the first war-related deaths in Ukraine this year. That is the U.S. and Germany announcing this week it will be sending these tanks, much-needed tanks, to Ukraine. The U.K. is sending 14 Challenger two tanks, which are supposed to arrive in the coming weeks. Germany has also announced it will be sending 14 of its Leopard tanks. The Biden administration says 31 Abrams tanks will also be sent. I want to bring in General Mark Kimmett this morning for some analysis on this development. He's a retired brigadier general and a former assistant secretary of state for political military affairs serving under President George W. Bush. Thank you, as always, for giving us some time this morning. Tanks described as a game changer, pivotal at this point in the battle. Why? Well, first of all, I don't think they're a game changer. They're important. They will be a significant contribution to the battlefield. But I don't think this will be as important, say, as the Javelin has been, as the HIMARS have been. But it will be able to give, if enough tanks are put in country, uh, the ability of the Ukrainians to conduct offensive operations uh, later this year. How about the next request of F-16s? Uh, I don't think that has crossed the political hurdle right now. I, I would certainly hope that we have Ukrainian pilots back training on the F-16s right now so that if the decision is made at the political level, they'll be able to be implemented as quickly as possible. If we haven't started doing the pilot training, uh, that's going to be another six to eight months after the announcement is made before they'll be in the skies. This is not the first time we've seen significant aid in weaponry being sent to Ukraine on the U.S.'s behalf and others. But we are seeing a new coalition, really, beyond NATO, but nations that are standing up to Russia's aggression and the invasion of Ukraine. Is it yep. too late for that? Should they have already done that prior to 11 months into battle? Well, first of all, I don't think that the significant contributions from non-NATO members uh, have made a difference on the ground. Yes, it's good that some money has been donated, but there are a lot of countries in the world that are trying to sit on the fence regarding this uh, war. They, they don't want to antagonize either the West nor uh, Russia, or they have other reasons such as Israel where they're uh, not full in uh, because they don't feel the danger that the NATO members do. Canada is one country that supports Ukraine, but has been reticent again, like Germany was for a while, to sending tanks and weaponry. Do you think that position should change? Well, I think it. I think it should. Uh, it, it's clear that Canada, uh, quite frankly, doesn't spend as much on defense spending as it should probably because it sees as the United States as its major defender for them. That free rider effect, I think, could be overcome uh, to a degree if Canada was able to make some contributions. Uh, but they candidly have reduced their military to such an extent that there, there's not much of a contribution they could make without affecting their own readiness. Putin is likely banking on the fact that the U.S. and the EU will start to lose interest in support of Ukraine, or if this draws on as it is, it will get too expensive. Is that a gross miscalculation on the Russian leader's part? Well, I don't necessarily think it's gross miscalculation, but it is certainly the case that the remarkable unity that has been shown by the NATO nations uh, is not something we can take for granted. Uh, look at the work that needed to be done to get Germany to make the decision on the tanks. Uh, it's clear some countries will have to moderate what they're contributing in the future because they need to be worried about their own internal defense. So uh, the important thing is to keep NATO unity because one of Putin's main goal was to split NATO unity. That's not a job you can uh, do uh, once a week. You've got to be working the unity of the coalition and the cohesiveness of the coalition every day. And is now the time to be talking about Ukraine joining NATO, or is that a conversation for down the road? I think it's a conversation for down the road. I think most members in NATO would like to see Ukraine eventually in um, the coalition, but that may be something that is truly discussed at a latter part in this war uh, when uh, Russia doesn't try to use the notion of NATO mem of Ukraine getting into NATO as a negotiating point at whatever future diplomacy will have to occur to end this war.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.